Johnny Boudreau grew up on a farm in Church Point, Louisiana, spending his childhood picking cotton and digging up potatoes. Cotton, Boudreau said, I recall best because I had to pick so much of it as a kid. He became a boxing fan by the age of five, watching fighters such as Sugar Ray Robinson and Kid Gavilan. When I looked at how graceful Sugar Ray Robinson was, Boudreau said, I wanted to go into the ring right then. All of the other kids wanted to be policemen or firemen. I wanted to be heavyweight champion of the world. When he was 12, the family moved to Houston where he began boxing at the boys club, coming under the tutelage of Moses Vaccaro. The trainer began telling everyone that Boudreau was Muhammad Ali's cousin as he patterned his style after the heavyweight champion. By the age of 17, Boudreau was sparring with the likes of Cleveland Williams, George Foreman, and Sonny Liston. My trainer was apprehensive about working with Sonny, Boudreau said, but it was an honor for me. He ran up a 97-7 record as an amateur, winning the Texas Golden Glove Light Heavyweight title in 1969 and the regional Golden Gloves Heavyweight title in 1972. In 1973, now standing 6'3 and weighing over 200 pounds, Boudreau turned professional with a Sears Roebuck executive named Robert Bish as his manager. Now trained by Al Potato Pie Bolden, Boudreau won his first 14 fights, shutting out long-standing gatekeepers like Terry Daniels and Scrap Iron Johnson before getting a draw with Stan Ward. In February of 1975, he took on Cookie Wallace for the Texas heavyweight title, winning a 12-round decision. The undefeated Boudreau was now seen as one of the top candidates to replace Ali. But Boudreau's advisor, Patty Flood, warned of overconfidence. A big young heavyweight gets noticed after five fights, Flood said. Their egos build real fast, so fast that they start talking before the talent isn't in full bloom. Flood remarked that while Boudreau possessed excellent hand speed, he wasn't the most aggressive fighter. Reporters and fans saw his hit-and-run style as dull. Boudreau stated that he didn't care if the fans booed him all his life, as long as they kept coming to his fights. I'm scared every time I fight, Boudreau said. Ali's too crazy to get scared. If it was legal to jump over the guy or roll under him, I would. I'll do anything not to get hit. You show me a man who likes to get hit, and I'll punch out a fool. Boudreau was brought in as a sparring partner for Ron Lyle prior to Lyle's title challenge to Ali. He simulated Ali's fighting style and trash talking during their sparring sessions, trying to aggravate the challenger. Boudreau often got the better of Lyle during these workouts, and later caught the eye of the boxing establishment when he shot out veteran trial horse Brian O'Melia over 10 rounds in New York. He's got the fastest hands and feet since Muhammad Ali, Ring Magazine John Ort said. I think his jab is as good as Ali's. Boudreau began calling for matches against Dwayne Bobbick and Muhammad Ali. I'm brash, young, and bold, Boudreau said. Ali is brash, bold, and old. But Boudreau's ascent hit a snag in 1976 as he lost a split decision to Howard Smith. I learned a lot about my friends that day, Boudreau said. I sat in my dressing room, needing someone to pat me on the back and lift my spirits, but I couldn't find any of my people. My manager, Bob Bish, was off in the corner whispering to somebody, and all the guys who used to hang around and sweet-talk me were suddenly gone. It gave me a totally different outlook on my career. The first thing I did was dump my manager. If the man is not there when you need him, what good is it? I had personal problems. I'd just gone through a divorce. My mind wasn't on fighting. I dropped from 215 to 200 pounds. But no one seemed to care. Boudreau now claimed to have no manager and no trainer. But he still held ties with Patty Flood, who was advertised as a talent scout for Don King. Eight months after the loss to Smith, Boudreau received his first nationally televised appearance, taking on Scott Ledoux. Boudreau was still hyped as a hot heavyweight prospect, and his entry into Don King's United States title tournament was seen as a springboard for his career. Chunks the bell for round one. Joe Punzer of Washington, D.C., the referee, scoring on a round system. Joe likes to use the left. Lead with the left steadily. Keep the opponent at bay with it. Ledoux will surprise you from time to time. Fighting from a half crouch with short movements. There'll be occasional right leads. Ledoux back against the ropes after getting a couple in to Boudreaux's body. Boudreaux trying to pour all over him, but not doing so that effectively. Who drove with a big build-up behind him and now with a new future to be fought 
from his point of view. Oh, quick right, quick right by Ledoux out of nowhere. Claude Johnny Boudreau, quick right. The very blow we told you about, a smile crossing the fighting Frenchman's face. The talker from Minnesota's all over Boudreau. And let me tell you right now, young Boudreau, so roundly promising and so roundly praised some months back, if he loses this fight, faces a whole new look at his fighting life. This is typical of Boudreau's whole career. He's been down like this in the early rounds. He gets Good, up right. and wins fights. He gets up and wins. You can't count him out at all. That blow was quick. Came from nowhere. Got to over Boudreau's left glove. Some of the booze you hear from the crowd. Bristling, bristling left's being thrown by Boudreau in this round. By far his best round of the fight. By far. Ledoux trying to come back up. As we count down for the end of the sixth round, we will be breaking at the end of the round for a commercial. But Boudreau came to at least some life here in the sixth round at the Halsey Field. You're looking at Johnny Boudreau as we are back live at the Halsey Fieldhouse at the United States Naval Academy. The eighth and final round is coming up. Johnny Boudreau sits there in apparently good physical shape, but he shouldn't be in much shape when it comes to the scoring. There's his opponent, Scott Ledoux, who knocked Johnny down in the third round, who has been the aggressor throughout the fight, has landed the stronger, the sharper blows. Johnny Boudreau showed his life really only in the sixth round in this fight when he started snapping that left lead of his. But it was a brief thing. Ledoux quickly went to the belly, as you saw there with the left. Tactic, he's... Oh, Boudreau's holding on. A left caught him in the face, temporarily blinded him. He went forward and was holding on. Boudreau intended to knock him out this round. He does not want to lose. In 1968, it was a close decision. We are approaching the end of this fight, which has most clearly been lackluster. It takes nothing away from the spirit and the purpose of the competitors, Scott Ledoux most particularly, but Boudreau has not shown us what we had expected of him. Ledoux came over and said, and the winner would be in the heavyweight bout, never know. John Boudreau. They gave it to Johnny Boudreau. The crowd doesn't believe it. Scott Ledoux doesn't believe it. George Foreman, what do you think? Look at Ledoux leaned over the ropes. Can you get around here, John? I see you walking in pain. You apparently hurt your ankle. When did this happen? Check around. Come on. No, no, no. No, hey, 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 be cool, man. Hey, be careful. Don't fight. Don't fight. You won the fight. What you got to do? Don't worry about that. When the fight is over. Don't fight. Forget it. You won. Hey, 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 man. Hey. We have had everything. I know. It's true. It's true. We have had everything happen in our lifetime. Yeah, don't worry. You'll be back. Yeah. yeah. There's no way. Do we have a camera? There's no way to describe that scene other than to let it speak for itself. A disheartened, disbelieving Scott Ledoux went after a hurt and bleeding Johnny Boudreau, who had just been awarded the decision. And so the whole thing ends wildly, ends in a mess. After a day of tremendous excitement here at the United States Naval Academy, it's not the kind of scene that you would have wanted to see happen. I'm sorry, sir, I can't. I must follow our format now and close it out. Howard Cosell's toupee was knocked off during the melee with one reporter describing it as a squirrel flying over a cliff. Adding to the controversy were cries of fix, as Boudreaux was the house fighter under Don King. 
The verdict prompted a grand jury investigation, but the decision stood. Boudreaux blamed his performance on a twisted ankle he suffered in the third round. If I'd had my ankle, Boudreaux said, he'd have been a sucker. Eight months later, Boudreaux's career began its descent. He was stopped in five rounds by Randy Stevens, as he lost four of his last five, which included losses to Harry Kotsia and John Tate. After losing to Tate, Boudreaux faded from the sport. He was slated to face Greg Page in February of 1980, but he canceled out after suffering a hand injury. Boudreaux never returned to boxing. Instead, he enrolled in seminary school. He eventually received his Doctor of Ministry from the Houston Graduate School of Theology. Boudreaux served as a pastor for the True Faith Missionary Baptist Church in Houston until the roof collapsed in June of 2016. Boudreaux remains in Houston, Texas, a father to three children and a published author on multiple books on Christianity and leadership.